Data-driven instruction is an inquiry-based approach to improving student learning. This process can be done by teachers individually or in PLC teacher teams. Why should you spend time collecting and analyzing data? And why should you use this to drive your instruction? Student data provides us with a clearer picture of our students and their performance levels. It helps us fill gaps and put the pieces of the puzzle together in order to complete the story about each student. Without data, students in schools would be like patients going to the doctor's office and being prescribed treatment according to their age instead of their symptoms. In other words, very little personalized experience is involved. We need to look at the students as individual learners to provide the best instruction, and that's where data-driven instruction comes in. The idea of using data to drive your instruction might sound overwhelming and time-consuming, but it really can be broken down into five easy steps. Step one, set a goal for what type of data you will be collecting. Decide on what skills and learning targets you want your students to master, and narrow your focus to at least one or three skills or learning targets, especially if you are just starting out. Step two, collect data by administering frequent assessments. These assessments might be formative or summative, but they should always be aligned to the learning targets or standards and make sense in scope, difficulty, and design. Step three, analyze your data using tools that you already have available to you. There is really no need to reinvent the wheel. Learning management systems like Schoology, as well as low-tech alternatives such as Google Form and Google Sheets are excellent resources at your disposal for analyzing data effectively. And remember, timing matters. Assessments are useless unless they are graded and analyzed promptly so that teachers can make adjustments. Step four, action. Decide on interventions or teaching strategies that you will be implementing. Make sure your action plan is clearly mapped out. An action plan template provided by your TLC department might be an excellent resource to utilize here. Step five, reflect on your action plan. Were your instructional practices impactful? Did authentic student learning take place? What can be improved or changed next time around? And do you need to reteach any skills or targets? These are a few examples of reflection questions that you can ask yourself or discuss with your coach at the end of a data-driven instructional cycle. Let's take a look at data-driven instruction in action. Ms. Gita is a middle school science teacher passionate about using data to improve her instruction and maximize student learning. She shares with us how she has implemented data-driven instruction in her classroom. Um, so I know that you've been doing a lot of awesome work with data and data-driven instruction in your classroom. Um, so first I'm just wondering, what, what kind of drove that for you? Okay. So let's start first by defining my goal and telling my strategies how to uh, reach out to the student's performance and student's growth uh, because this is our goal at the end. Uh, so my goal is by the end of the year, students will demonstrate growth in articulating their scientific thinking through identifying correctly the variables, elaborating high policies and drawing conclusions to solve a specific problem or scenario and that is measured by specific rubric. Mm -hmm. So first of all, I need to design the performance task. Mm -hmm. During the year, I want to uh, monitor or to track the student's growth through three or four different performance tasks, sometimes through projects, sometimes through modeling, sometimes through scientific experiments. And once I design the performance task, I know which, what I want to target to, to see, so I know my target skills, and later on I create rubrics. Mm -hmm. So I make sure that to use all the same rubrics for all the performance tasks, tasks. so like this I will have a more consistent and a consistency in the results. Mm -hmm. uh, so for four performance tasks, I use the rubrics as I said, and I, I analyze these data through Google Form, spreadsheets, and sometimes uh, through Schoology. Mm -hmm. so, so basically these were the tools that you were using to collect the data and exactly. kind of analyze it. Yes, mm -hmm. that's it. These are very simple tools, but I can analyze it in different ways using some features like sparkline, average, difference in between uh, two different performance tasks. All found in sheets. Exactly. 
uh, sometimes Schoology is really a very important learning management system mm -hmm. uh, as uh, it can show it can show some um, some data, mm -hmm. uh, especially when you can compare uh, classes, the average of classes. Mm. So it's. Yeah, like I feel like Schoology is an underutilized data collection and analysis tool that we have. Yes. Um, so what do you mean? Like when you compare the averages of classes, what does that help you do? Yes, okay. For example, for some classes, I can say that uh, this target or this skill is master. Uh -huh. So um, in this way, I want to ask myself why in this mm -hmm. class this target is really mastered, but in other classes, it's not. It's not. Okay, and sometimes I can assign even a specific question for a specific target, and in this way I can have the average of the class mm -hmm. for this specific target. So, so basically, if your activities and resources are aligned to standards on Schoology, then you're able to get data specific to how well students did on specific targets. Exactly, and that's what you end up using to, to yes. compare. Okay. Yes. Yes. I use also the low, medium, high protocol. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a protocol where I have to ask myself some questions. It's only to know, for example, why these types of students that have, for example, a low performance in this skill, mm -hmm. why are these, what are the three things, for example, that made these students in this type, mm -hmm. you know? And what are the other three things that made the other students in medium high? Mm -hmm. And what are the things that made the students in like in the high pile, or they mastered the, the the skill from the first time? Here, so so you were kind of like using your data for your own reflection, exactly, and that also will affect my instructional strategy mm -hmm. in the class, even my instructional plan. Sometimes I would say I want to start by this topic just after two weeks. But after I did some reflection and I saw that students didn't master, for example, the conclusion part, I try my best to, uh, to, to embed this conclusion skill that I need students to master it mm. and some activities that I was not preparing this activity uh, previously, but I make sure to, to prepare it and do another instructional yeah. uh, plan. Yeah. Yeah. So you were using the data to drive your instructional practices and even that kind of activities that you would create for the students. Exactly. And you kind of use the data to help you fill the gaps that you isolated through the protocol, the, the low, medium, high protocol. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And even I created the, for students some digital portfolio. Mm -hmm. It's called self-reflection. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they can only look at the rubric where uh, which grade or what is the scale they, they got it at the first project mm -hmm. and what is the scale they got it for the same indicator for the second project mm -hmm. and here they can compare their average and they can get really uh, be involved yes. and even estimating their grade. Yeah. So this was uh, my second goal wow. for this year. Yeah. So it is about uh, how uh, really close can students estimate their uh, read grade. Mm -hmm. So before uh, or after submitting the assignment, they have to fill uh, their self-reflection. They use the same rubric that I use mm -hmm. and they have to say, for example, for this indicator, well, I mastered it, it should be 4 over 4, uh -huh, 3 over uh -huh. 4, and at the end, I can grade the assignment. Mm -hmm. So essentially, you're not just using the data to reflect on your own practices, you're also allowing the students to use the data to reflect on their own learning. Exactly, and that in, this, in the second goal, I make sure that they read the rubric. So once they read the rubric, mm -hmm. they know what they have to focus on beforehand. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, wow, that's powerful because a lot of the times you give students rubrics either after the fact or during the project and they kind of just skim through it but they don't really absorb it properly or like exactly. what they should be striving or aiming for and especially if your rubrics are aligned with set standards or learning targets it helps them align their learning yeah actually that's what happened in the first project mm -hmm. so they did the self-reflection after they did it after they are done by the uh -huh. project and later on when we start the second project we said okay guys let's make sure to read the rubric to understand them and then we can start by modeling we can start by the other experiment or whatever you know mm -hmm. so uh, yes and we make sure to let them read the rubric so they know what they have to focus on
And, and what difference did that make? So what, what difference did you observe uh, between them doing the rubric reflection after or doing the rubric reflection with a pre consistent like pre-existing knowledge of the rubric? Yeah. yeah, this was very evident in their grade, especially when they read the uh, rubrics beforehand. Mm. Okay. So this so so basically the data showed that when they were exposed to the rubric ahead of time, their grade on the project increased. For sure. And we have to remind them. Honestly, thank you for sharing your experience with data and data-driven instruction. It's very obvious that this has been a powerful you know, instructional strategy and tool that you use in your classroom. And it's clear from the data that it did impact student learning positively. Yes, so, thank, thank you, you so, so much for sharing. Thank you so much. And I really believe in data-driven uh, uh, solutions as well. Yeah. So we can change our instructional strategy based on data. Mm -hmm. But we don't have to make it as a hectic uh, work and extra work, so we have to use uh, our platform smarter. Exactly. And so, what you say, work uh, smart, not hard. Not hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Use what you already have. So. Yeah, exactly. Okay, perfect. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs>